Well, I wanted this week's two-part science news video to be about a new CRISPR study that just came out. But instead, in light of the world, I think it makes the most sense to talk about the genetics of COVID-19. Let's start with some basics. In their simplest form, viruses have two main parts. Their genetic material, which could be DNA or RNA, and some kind of protein package that holds that genetic material. COVID-19 is an RNA virus. This means that the genetic material inside of it is stored as RNA, not DNA. And for COVID-19, that RNA is found within a nucleocapsid protein structure, which is inside of a lipid membrane envelope. And that envelope is covered in spike proteins, which are what give coronaviruses their name. They look a bit like a crown or a corona. To replicate, the virus must infect a host cell and hijack that cell's replication and protein production machinery. Those spike proteins on the outside of the virus are what attach to receptors in the cells of our lungs, ACE2 receptors. The virus then fuses its membrane with the cell's membrane and releases its RNA into the cell. This is where it takes advantage of the cell's machinery to make more RNA and more of its proteins. But really, the virus's RNA genome doesn't need to contain too much information. It's only about 30,000 bases long and encodes for the proteins that it needs to make more virus. Once the new RNA and proteins are replicated, they're assembled into new viruses, which then leave the host cell to go and infect more cells. Now there's a really awesome infographic from the New York Times that goes over this in amazing detail that I've linked below, along with some other papers and information in the description. There are a lot of things to talk about with COVID-19. But I am not an epidemiologist, and I'm also not a virologist, but I am a geneticist. So I want to talk about your genetics-related questions, because I think that's where I personally can help to interpret the most information. And I'm going to try and be as clear and transparent as possible about what we know, what we don't know, and what I am and am not an expert in. So I think that there are a couple of big things that we could talk about in part two, the live stream part of this video. I think testing is one. The test for the coronavirus is done using a special kind of polymerase chain reaction called qPCR. And I did lots of qPCR as a part of my PhD research. So we could talk about what that is and how it works. Or we could talk about DNA and RNA sequencing and how they're being used to try and trace back to the origin of this latest outbreak to find evidence of where it started. Or we could talk about how sequencing is being used to try and look at how and if the virus is changing and mutating as it moves through populations, and what that might mean for immunity against it. But last time, you also all surprised me with some great questions that I did not think of. So please let me know what you are curious about regarding the genetics of this virus. All right, so I had a script for this last portion of the video, but honestly, it feels weird and I'd rather just talk to you right now. So Friday at noon Pacific time, make a cup of tea, make a cup of coffee, of cocoa, and come and join me so that we can all talk. And I wanna talk about genetics and I wanna talk about COVID-19, but I also wanna use this as a time for us to just talk as well, uh, for those of us who are staying home especially, because I know you have heard this a thousand times this week, but if you can, please, please, please stay home to help stop the spread of the disease. There are so many people who can't stay home right now, doctors and nurses and grocery store workers and truck drivers and garbage collectors and the people working to keep our cities still functioning with lights and power and internet and a whole bunch of people who just can't afford to stay home. So please, if you can stay home, even if you are feeling totally healthy and well, please join me in staying home to try and keep those other people healthy. It's scary times, but we're all in this together, and I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. I look forward to talking with you all on Friday. I think it's just a human moment of connection that I need and you might also need right now. And for me, information is power. It makes me feel like I have a little bit more control, and so I hope that in doing this, I can give you a little bit more information if that's something that will make you feel a little better too. So I hope that you and all of your loved ones are safe and healthy and well. I will see you on Friday. And until then, stay put and wash your hands.